morning everybody time metal at weatherman here hopefully everyone's doing well so we are getting ever close to tropical storm barrel maybe even eventually hurricane barrel making landfall once again now there's a couple things to make note of with barrel right now before we get into the rest of this tropical uh, update here actually but with barrel whereas before the structure was looking at times almost miserable we are starting to see some convection forming around the center basically just some new thunderstorms so i do think we are going to eventually see barrel begin its strengthening trend it's taken a while for it to get its act back together over after its landfall over the yucatan here waters have been warm but wind shear has been a big problem for this storm and i do think though by the time we get towards this afternoon we're going to start to see that subside more especially as it takes that turn to the north so a slightly more favorable environment. Don't expect major strengthening of any kind. I do expect this to potentially make it back to hurricane. I do think it's weaker than what the forecast is indicating here. We're still expecting winds up to about 85 miles an hour. I do think that we might be a little bit below that. I mean, I know the waters are warmer than average over here. We're near 90 degree Fahrenheit temperatures there in the Gulf, but Considering the structure of this on satellite, it still has a little bit of ways to go here. Like I said, I do think it'll make hurricane, but I'm not so sure if I'm sold on 85 right now. I think it might be a little less. That might, that honestly is a better case scenario if I'm being honest though. But we could still expect all the hazards alike, wind, storm surge, rain, uh, tropical rainfall, Tropical tornadoes possible, and of course, increased surf rift currents are to be expected here. If you missed our live stream yesterday, we did kind of go in depth more with the severe weather threat and the storm surge flooding threat, all of the above here. But as a whole, as we look at this storm here, we expect landfall to be late tonight into tomorrow morning. So of course, we'll be live to cover that. But then from that point, We'll actually see this go through East Central Texas by Monday afternoon. By Tuesday, we'll see this week into a depression once again, or for the first time in a long time. And then from that point, we'll see it go through parts of the Midwest here before eventually just dissipating entirely, pretty much over the Great Lakes here. We will be able to expect an increase in moisture across the board, especially on the right side of this region here. A lot of uh so we can expect shower and storm activity as a whole to increase through the southeast and even parts of the mid-atlantic as we continue to go forward here ohio valley is in there as well but as a whole here i think by that point a lot of the impacts will be limited and we're mainly just going to be dealing with an increase in moisture if we get any sort of forcing forcing mechanism shower and storm activity is definitely going to be increasing maybe even a chance of some odd stronger storms here or there I don't expect a focused severe weather threat or very well concentrated severe weather threat from this once it goes further inland. Now, looking at Barrow, like I said before, we we're expecting her to make landfall by Monday evening, but we also got to take a look at what could be behind Barrow. And for that, I mostly have good news because when I take a look at the Atlantic as a whole, I do see a good bit of wind shear ongoing still. So this is going to make things a little less conducive for tropical development here. Main development region does look like it starts to clear up here, but there's still a fair amount of wind shear right now. So we'll have to see how things uh, progress with that. But eventually, as we go further into the month, we do start to see some clearing once again. And I do think that's when we will start to see maybe a little bit of a resurgence in activity, but at least in the short term, we get a break after barrel. Euro's showing the same thing here in the top right corner. So another way we can look around and see if there's any extra pieces of energy flying around within the Atlantic is through the vorticity map here, which is basically looking for spin. And even this doesn't show a lot in the short term here, which is good news. Like I said before, we don't want to see anything too quickly in after barrel because barrel has been a big problem especially over here towards the Antilles and of course over towards Jamaica there was a fair amount of damage there as well Yucatan all the same here but 
I do notice that we're going to see an increase uh, in, in vorticity here, albeit slight right now, over towards the uh, main development region as we get towards the 18th. So towards the back half of the month, like I said, we could anticipate a potential resurgence in tropical energy coming into play. But GFS in the year or GFS and Euro ensembles are kind of scattered across the board. GFS is a little bit hotter on it. Euro is not so much. But I do see a little bit of evidence with that. But in any case, though, we will go ahead and take a final look at what our ensemble members look like. This is basically taking a look at what our potential low pressure centers could look like. I don't know how, how we lost that screen here. Okay, so this is basically a good example of a tropical storm. This is Barrow, by the way, of course, as we all know. And what we're looking for are these areas where you see the increase in color. And these red numbers forming in within these isobars or contour lines, if they become more circular, the higher probability of us having a low pressure center. And the in, and it's the same with the inverse here with the high pressure centers. These high pressure centers are going to be important with not only steering the storm, but also increasing wind shear. So across the board here, there's our high pressure. We got high pressure over the Gulf here. So plenty of wind shear to go across the board here. And you can see where these uh, isobars are reaching right here is right into that main development region. So that's going to help hamper development again, like I said, in the short term. But as we go further and further along, notice how we're starting to see an increase in activity here. We do need to watch that main development region once again. And maybe the Caribbean as we get towards the back half of the month might, might become a point of interest. I do see a lot of shower and storm activity over towards the Panama Canal based off the, all the low pressure that I'm seeing here. So that's another thing to watch closely. But for the most part, at least after barrel, we get a break. That's pretty much it for this tropical outlook here. Just kind of condensing this down. We will be live later this evening and probably into the overnight as barrel prepares to make landfall here. We do have to again be on the lookout for tropical tornadoes, storm surge, flash flooding, and much more of course wind being a factor as well so hope to see you all there until then it's been tired metal at weatherman you guys take care and have an awesome rest of your sunday